Hey everybody, welcome to Cousin Jack Car. So today we're going to be unboxing this spoon carving kit from Beavercraft Tools. They asked me to pick out one of their sets and give it a run, and I thought, hmm, let me take a look. I looked at the various sets and I picked this one for a very specific reason. Number one, I've never carved a spoon, don't have a hook knife. Well, so I'll give that a shot. And then the other tools that were included here led me to believe that with the Sloyd knife and this detail knife, you could probably use this kit for all kinds of projects, not just spoons. So let's crack it open and take a look, see what you get with this kit. Now what's important uh, for me is how long I had to wait. <laughs> so after I gave the Beavercraft folks my address, this kit was in the mail, in my mailbox I should say, the next day which I thought, well, that's pretty impressive. Let's just uh, take this plastic off here. Now the Beavercraft tools are made in Ukraine. And uh, I'm sure they have warehousing here in the US. Otherwise I would not have received it so quickly. Uh, I do feel for all the folks in Ukraine. Let's hope that the war and the fighting there stops soon. So here's the tool roll. It's a, a burlap sort of material. And we'll, uh, we'll untie this. So, first let's open up the, uh, the hook knife here. Now the hook knife is very specific. It's made for hollowing out um, spoon bowls. And I suppose you could use it for other Similar purposes where you're hollowing out a piece of wood. Okay. So as you can see, they package it pretty, pretty well. There's our hook knife. And you can see right away, uh, this is a right-handed tool. It's important to be aware of that, okay? If you're a left-handed carver like me, be aware that in the kit, there will be a right-handed spoon or hook knife. Now, I'm ambidextrous enough, uh, enough to go ahead and use this tool because the, the motion is very simple. If you do want a left-handed hook knife, they do sell these on their website. A check to see. Now the edge on this is hollow ground and we'll check the sharpness and everything here in a little bit. It looks like the tool is mounted well into the handle. Handle looks like it might be ash, could be oak, uh, hard to tell. Has a pretty good feel to it. All right. So this hook knife is high carbon steel. And the handle feels pretty good. Let's take a look at one of the other knives in this set. This looks like the detail knife right here. You can tell by the handle on it. So the detail knife um, has a little sleeve on here. This is maybe a temporary cover. I, I don't know that I'd want to use this. It slides right off, so it's not, not what I would want to use. Um, interesting thing to me about this detail knife, it's very similar to the FlexCut KN13 detail knife. And let's take a look and compare them. You can see that the profile on the handle is very similar. The blade's a little different but I would imagine that they function very similarly. What's, what's significantly different here is the width and the thickness of these blades. So this flex cut detail knife is maybe 1 16th. And, and the back end, the spine on this Beavercraft detail knife is a full 1 8th, twice as thick as the flex cut. We'll see what kind of difference that might make. Uh, now, 
what I like to do is check a blade for nicks. And to do that, I very carefully run the blade across my thumbnail. If there's a nick in the blade, the vibration is easy to feel. I don't feel any nicks. And we'll check the sharpness here in a second. The blade looks like it's straight as far as the mount. And the handle, yeah, it feels pretty good. Now we'll take a look at the Sloyd knife. So here's our Sloyd knife, and, and like the detail knife, it has a little protective sleeve that it comes with. And the sleeve, it feels, it's not paper, it feels like it's almost a very thin sort of a plastic. This one does fit more snugly. This sleeve doesn't fall right off, so that's a good thing to have. The handle is pretty grippy. It doesn't feel like there's any finish on the handle. The blade is straight and uh, you can see that it's, it's fairly thick. Uh, like that detail knife, it's probably a 1 8 thickness on that spine. It's got a Scandi grind on it, this Sloyd knife, which again is good for spoon carving, but this could also be used for a larger project if you were carving a figure and you needed a rough out knife. Now it does have this upsweep here on the profile, which is very good for slicing. It really does uh, come in handy when you have that sort of a profile. Check it for nicks to see what we can see. Feel a little something maybe right about there. And again, we'll check the sharpness. Uh, this blade, let's take a, a quick measure and see how long this is. Yes, yeah, three, maybe three and one sixteenth. And the cutting edge on the detail knife is about one and a half inches, which is a, a pretty good, pretty good length for a knife like this. So this Lloyd knife and the detail knife are all high carbon steel, and they look to be in good shape coming out of the box. We also have some green honing compound here and a piece of leather for a strop. It has a, a smooth sort of finished side to it and then the fuzzy leather side. Now for me, I would put the compound on the fuzzy side. Why is that? Because the fuzzy side will hold that compound uh, pretty well. And then I have the smooth side, after I've wiped the compound off my blade, the smooth side for the, the finishing polish, okay? I see a lot of people using the smooth side to put the compound down there. It, you can do that, certainly. But then what are you going to do when you're done with that? You're going to flip it over and use the fuzzy side? Probably not. I would do the opposite. I would put the compound here and then use the smooth side for my finish. Now you can also, of course, glue this down and then you'd only have one side to work with. I think it's a good idea to keep it free like this because it's flexible. And you can use that if you're going to be working on your hook knife and you want to get in there with a a strop, or you're working on a gouge, having a nice piece of flexible leather can be real handy. Just my, uh, my thoughts on that. Now, one of the other things that came in the box is some safety tape. Safety tape is something that uh, many carvers use. I use it too, so it's good to have. And then we have the tool roll itself. So this is a a burlap sort of material. I can tell you that the tool roll itself would cost you about $14. I know because I have one right here. 
and I use that tool roll. That's where my I keep my flex cut knife. I'm just taking a smell there. This one smells pretty good. Uh, the one I got, this this other one when I bought it, it had a little funk going on there, and I had to soak it in vinegar and rinse it out, and it actually made this a little softer and more pliable. So it may not hurt to take this and uh, put it through a wash just to, to loosen it up a little bit. It's, it's a little stiff, but very nice to get a tool roll with your kit. All right, let's check some of the sharpness on these blades and find out how sharp they are. We'll start with the detail knife. What I want to do is run the knife along the entire length of the blade to see if there are any snags. Okay, not feeling any snags. Let's see if we can do a push cut. Yeah. So if a, a knife is really sharp, not only can you do a push cut, but you can twist and turn along the way. So let's give that a shot. Yeah, I got some twisting and turning going on. So we know the detail knife is pretty sharp. Yep. Let's check the sloid and see what kind of an edge we have. First we'll check uh, the entire length of the blade to see if we have any snags. Nice and clean. Can we do a push cut? Let's see. Yeah, that one does a push cut, but it was um, not cutting through the paper as easily as the detail knife did. But I would say, overall, it's a sharp blade right out of the box. Uh, hook knife, um, like I said, this has a hollow ground on it. And I'm not sure we can do the paper test. Let's give it a shot. Oh yeah, worked pretty well. Well, we know that these blades come sharp out of the box. And overall, I would say, yeah. Not bad, because at the time that I'm recording this, this set sells for about $40. And when we think about that, for this whole set, we get the compound too, and don't forget the leather, right? So we're talking really seven pieces here. We have three knives, compound, leather, safety tape, and a tool roll for about 40 bucks. Not a bad deal as far as I can tell. And that's, that's something that they talk about on their uh, pay web page where they talk about the kit. They talk about having high quality, durability, a wide range of projects that you can carve with this set. I agree with that because like I said, you have a detail knife, you have a rough out knife, more or less, and you can do some spoon carving. It covers a wide range of projects. And they talk about affordability. Well, I would say, yeah, seven piece set for about $40, that's affordable. What about the high quality and durability? Well, I'll say the jury is out. The next step is, you know, I'll need to carve several projects with this set and give you a follow-up video with my honest opinion about the quality and about durability. You know, are, are these knives, for example, going to hold an edge? We'll see when I give them a shot. Now, is this everything you need to get started? No, no it's not. You do need some wood, right? It doesn't come with wood in the kit, so you need to either buy some wood or find some wood that you will use for your carving project. And I would say you also need some gloves. You know, a cut resistant glove is important, especially for a beginner. If this kit is for beginners, please beginners protect yourself. So what you want to look for is a level five cut resistant glove. And this one here is from Dexfit. Uh, I do use the Dexfit glove. 
works well for me. Has some good grip to it on the fingers and the palm. I also have a glove here that I've had for many years. This is a wizard glove. And uh, you can see it gets a lot of use. Both of these protect you from slices, not from punctures. All right, so you still have to be careful, even when you're wearing a glove. I'll put some links to these gloves in the uh, description below the video. I'll also put a link below on this particular kit, which is the Beavercraft S13 spoon carving kit. But like I said, you can do more than spoons. Well, all right, folks. I think that'll be it for this session. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.